and uh, it's just top notch team. Um, Trulio. Now these this team's um, really really interesting. Um, so Trulio is a startup that provides electronic identity and address verification for five billion people and two hundred and fifty million businesses um, in over one hundred and ninety five countries, um, which is pretty impressive because it started out um, as a company that was trying to um, address the two hundred and twenty million children whose births go unrecorded and more than two uh, billion people that don't have a bank. That was the original mission. Um, but what it's become is basically an API SaaS model that allows you to do identification verification. Now, obviously, you know, they are founded in 2011, 2019. They raised a, um, a C round at 70 million. And I know they're 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 doing great things right now. Their team's expanding. Um, one of their founders, uh, we were uh, working on a, a separate project together. Great, great people. Um, and uh, they're doing some really, really cool stuff. Then we go to Hootsuite, the big daddy here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people here have heard of Hootsuite. Uh, they're kind of one of our big, um, one of our initial um, social media darlings here in Vancouver. So they're founded in 2008 and 2013, they uh, did a $165 million Series B round. Um, now what they are is basically the tools for a, a company or even an individual to uh, do social media management. So you, um, you can have multiple people log in, you can control who logs in, um, um, you know, all your social media needs Hootsuite can handle. Um, they're a pretty large operation now. They have over a thousand staff. They're in 13 places, uh, 13 offices around the world, and uh, they have over 16 million users. So we know they're doing fine. Next, we have Later. Now, I love the guys at Later. Um, I know the founders. Uh, we, we actually created their iOS and Android apps, um, but Later is kind of like a junior Hootsuite. Um, they were originally focused on, uh, uh, well, Instagram. Uh, they were originally called Latergram, uh, but uh, they were focused originally on Instagram. What's interesting is they came out of a hackathon. And I always love to question, can a business come out of a hackathon? Well, clearly it can. Um, so they, uh, much like Hootsuite, Later is the leading visual marketing platform for Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. They have over 100 employees and make a lot of money, and thus they haven't taken any big rounds, um, which, which I think is great. Uh, so like I said, the last money they took was right when they were founded, a $1.3 million round. And I know these guys are on fire um, and then doing great stuff. Um, and again, I know, I know the founders really well, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. I actually have a podcast where um, it's called Afternoon Tea and where I interview uh, a lot of um, successful founders uh, across Canada. And uh, Ian uh, was one of the founder of Later, was one of the, uh, one of the early interviews I did. Uh, next, we have Unbounce. Uh, Unbounce is a super cool company. Um, they do like, think about them as like A-B testing, but done easily. So it's a drag and drop builder that lets you create and publish your own landing pages without needing a developer to code them. It's uh, easier and faster to get more conversions from traffic um, or for your traffic. Um, and the, the one of the founders, they actually have six founders. I don't recommend six founders, but they, they do have six founders. Um, but one of their founders, um, I interviewed him uh, last week uh, for my for my podcast, super interesting company, and their CTO is actually our director of engineering's mentor. So really love being tightly integrated with these people. But in 2009, they were founded. In 2020, they just just basically maybe three months ago announced a 52 million dollar seed, um, a Series C. So they're doing great stuff, and uh, we actually are building a project with them right now. Um, not with them, but using their software. And what I love, and, and just imagine this. So there's the the MVP, then you know, you're trying to create an MVP, but what you can do with their software is you can actually create a pre-MVP. So you can actually test assumptions by building funnels and landing pages of a product you wanna buy before you've even created it. So you can actually test some of those assumptions and then you have some market analysis, really good market analysis before you even start you know, your, your zeros and ones of code. Um, and it really allows you to know a lot more about the product and the needs before you've even created it, which is great. Um, Vizier, um, I don't like their logo. No one knows it's Vizier. They always think it's easier, uh, but they, um, they do some really great stuff. In fact, they did a big round recently, um, maybe about two years ago. I know this because they had to move to a new office and they sold me and my office a whole bunch of their super high-end furniture they didn't want anymore. I was really happy to purchase that. Um, so anyhow, you know, Vizier is a, uh, the market leader in workforce analytics. Okay, so um, basically it's a cloud based analytics application that delivers uh, people insight. 
Um, so if you really want to know about your workforce, this gives you all the information, the dashboard and all of that. Um, they do super cool stuff again um, and raised a total of 91.5 million. So uh, they're doing they're doing really well. Now, Thinkific, uh, love these guys because they they're kind of really hot in the news. I know they're, they're in a super hiring mode right now. They just raised, I think it was announced two weeks ago, their 22 million season or series B um, after being founded in 2012. Now, what they do, and it's really quite cool, is they allow you to create um, market and sell uh, online courses but they, you, you basically create these courses through their through their platform, and then you can embed them in your own website. Uh, so they've done over 25,000 courses, 164 countries, 20 plus languages, but really, really cool stuff. If you just want to create um, ways to either test your customers or, you know, or, or educate your um, your staff, you can use these uh, these quizzes that Thinkific prov uh, provides, and it's, it's really cool stuff. Um, Skyhive. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I had no idea who these people were until I started looking it up. I was surprised to find that um, uh, was it uh, Crunchbase had them so ranked high. They were they were even above Hootsuite. So I guess they're kind of like a a, a fancy well-to-do group right now. Um, they relatively new, as, uh, as you can see here. They're founded in 2017, and they just did a Series A um, in 2020 for eight million. Um, let, I'm going to read a little bit about what they do because I didn't really get it, to be honest. So they're an artificial intelligence based SaaS platform that aims to reskill enterprise workforces and communities. So basically it, it understands um, labor market data and then delivers some um, some opportunities for those who need to get trained and and, um, you know, it upskills uh, the individual, but it identifies them using artificial intelligence and then and then pushes that, um, you know, through through the through the. Um, through the channel so that you can start saying, hey, maybe you should work on this skill or that. It's with, They're big with government, they're big with uh, private enterprise and they're doing really good stuff. Um, okay, well that's, I've only got so much time. So again, I just kind of wanted to touch on, you know, this is the, the podcast I do. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, you know, I get to speak to wonderful people like uh, Josh Nelson of Eastside Games. He just, um, he, they just, um, Took in a hundred million dollars for what they're doing. Super interesting indigenous fella, uh, Carrie Gibson, really cool. She actually is in a wheelchair um, and an amazing. She works for the United Nations, does a whole bunch of great stuff. And you know, I get to I get to get to speak to these people and uh, share their stories, and it's a lot of fun. So if you are interested in more of the Vancouver uh, side of the story, um, you know, please give it a listen. And come up, Samida. Thank you so very very much. Wow. Well, thanks for that, Chris. I mean, I. Uh... Putting in the the hunger in there and the, your uh, Korean introduction was oh. unexpected, but uh, very cool. J just for the other panelists, you don't have to introduce yourself in Korean. Also, <laughs> they're probably like, wait, wait, "Am I supposed to speak Korean on this thing?" I think Mark and Gary are waiting here, thinking like, "What what the heck is going on?" <laughs> it's one of the rare opportunities I can do it. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. No worries, and and that's cool for our audience. That so you're you're married to a, a Korean woman and. Um, so okay, so you've been around, you've been uh, familiar with Korean culture for a while. Oh yeah, oh yeah, shiksa to, or umshiki. So yes, that was a bad accent. I apologize. Hey, you know what? You're trying, and that's great. I mean, you know, um, it's cool that you're. I know people who have lived here for, you know, 10, 20 years, and they can't even do that. So uh, hats off. Yeah. Uh, so you, well, I'm. So you do, yeah, you. often. It sounds like. Say it again? You you come to Korea often? Yeah, no, that's okay. But I travel with my my mother in law. Like we we did we did a month of Africa, South America. We we travel a lot together. So I realize I better and the kids speak it. So uh, um, yeah, but I, I love going to Korea whenever I can. That's great, and it's great that your kids are speaking it too. Because I've got friends who don't, even though they're half. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll move on to the other panels, and we'll come back to you uh, during the Q and A time uh, with with all the panels together. So. Thanks, Chris, for your presentation. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and bring up Mark from San Francisco. Okay, so as we're- uh, Star video. Hello, Hello. 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 Hello.
Yeah, you that's it. Look at that. You got all my Korean. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, not gonna have a monologue, but you know. But you know what? If you want, I could do this in Swedish. So that's a stupid uh, uh, factoid that I speak fluent Swedish. So if you guys wanted, I could do this whole thing in Swedish. But you probably don't. Well, I'm not sure if we have any Swedes in the audience. Maybe when they watch it on on YouTube, you know. But um, that's 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 a cool, interesting fact about you. You speak Swedish. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So random. So um, yeah, let me know if I need to slow down or whatever. If you're getting any comments from the chat, but uh, hi, my name is Mark, and uh, I am from New York originally, but for few years now I've lived in uh, the San Francisco area. We actually live a little bit outside of San Francisco, um, but uh, I've been in the SaaS business for 20 years and uh, it's really it's really been amazing. So I'm gonna share with you um, a little presentation uh, I put together. Um, one second. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. And slide show. Okay. All right. Uh, we good? You guys can see the uh, you can see the screen and everything. We can see the screen. You just need to go to presenter mode. I, I think. I mean, uh, in, in PowerPoint. Unless you want us to see your notes. I need to go to 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 what mode? Why? Because you can't see me or. We can we can see you, but I mean we're seeing all the the whole screen. So maybe you want to click presenter mode. Uh, it's the button underneath apply to all on the on the right side of the screen. That little small. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I'm in uh, I'm in uh, presenter mode. Jonathan, are we uh, are we good here? Oh uh, yeah, this is fine. we see it. Okay. Yeah, it should be full screen. So hold on. No. Let me. Uh, let me. Uh, okay. I'll just start it again. One second. All right. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Huh. That's weird. It's not in. Uh, uh, let me just do this slideshow. Zoom slideshow. Okay. Is it in slideshow mode now? No. Hmm, that's weird because I'm seeing it. Okay, that's okay. We, can, can you see me flipping through the slides or no? Um, no, we don't. We see slide one still. Okay, so um, let me just figure out. And now you see slide two. Now we see it. Slide three. Okay. Um, Not in presenter mode, but we. Okay. We, you know what? Go back. Uh, I can see. I can see your mouth moving for a second. Can you do it again? Now, back to what you were doing before when you were going to do that slide. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll just. Well, you see where your mouse okay. is? Okay. You can click the, the yeah. icon at the bottom right. Right underneath apply to all. If you move your mouse, okay. I'll, yeah. No, right underneath apply to all. The button right underneath it, the icon. Yeah. That yeah. icon, that's presenter mode, shortcut. So that might bring us there. But it hasn't. Hmm. All right. That's all right. Oh, whatever. We'll just yeah. We'll just we'll just go through this uh, as is. Um, let me just hold on. View. Uh, zoom. Okay. Is that a little better? A little, is that a little larger. It is. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, we can't. Uh, unfortunately, our. Uh, Presenter mode isn't working, so I'll have to deal with the rest of this. But in any case, hello and welcome from San Francisco. And what's really cool is San Francisco is really the home of SaaS. This is where SaaS grows. The world's largest SaaS companies have been founded and um, are still here. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute and why that matters. So, hi. Hi. My name is Mark Friedler. I'm a four-time startup CEO in the SaaS space in video games. And that was my first time in Korea. It was 2004 to come uh, hang out with some really cool um, multiplayer gaming people. 
So, um, and I, I have huge respect for Korea because that's really the uh, place where digital assets and collectible digital assets um, began. So, um, you know, almost 20 years ago. So that's super cool. And uh, I've started, like I said, four different companies. I then worked at a company called Oracle. Um, one of my companies, uh, Game Daily, was acquired by AOL Time Warner back in the day. And AOL used to be a really big or was the world's largest media company uh, at one point. And um, most recently, I've been very deep in the blockchain space. Uh, I also run a meetup called Crypto Mondays that uh, we actually did last night. and It's streamed all over the world. And um, most recently, I was running video gaming and blockchain strategy for Anheuser-Busch, which is the world's largest beer company. And um, now I'm working with uh, a bunch of different companies as an advisor, as a mentor. And then I run a sales business where we sell um, technology services to growing companies. So um, let's talk about SaaS and what is the SaaS model. Can you see the slide now with the laptop and all that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So what is the SaaS model? SaaS obviously means software as a service. And basically it is a piece of software that's hosted on a cloud infrastructure, i.e. it's operated um, somewhere else and you access it through a web browser and businesses pay a monthly fee to get access to the software. Um, and it takes, um, you know, to make a good SaaS product, it takes, you know, a lot of coding knowledge, a good amount of good UI design um, and everything to make a SaaS product worthwhile. In fact, virtually every mobile game that you play is a SaaS product because um, it's displayed on your mobile device, but it's running in the cloud. So the San Francisco Bay Area, I think is by far the leader in the most uh, cloud companies, SaaS companies in the world. In fact, did you know that 80% of publicly traded cloud and SaaS companies are still based in the Bay Area? Yeah. So the top 10 include Adobe, PayPal, Salesforce, ServiceNow, um, Workday, Shop, Shopify. I know we're going to hear a little bit that Shopify is Canadian, but, you know, I guess they're counting them here. Um, Atlassian, originally Australian, but, but now here. Square, Viva System, Zoom, Twilio, the list goes on and on. And um, when we look at the 50 largest SaaS companies by market cap, um, pretty much everyone on this list is in the Bay Area. Salesforce. Salesforce really kicked things off probably about 20 years ago when uh, Mark Benioff had the famous logo that said, no software, you know, like the no parking, it has the little sign with uh, the line through it. Um, that, was, uh, that was a radical thought at the time, uh, meaning, uh, you know, no software. I in fact started a very, very early um, SaaS company and it was so early that um, our clients really didn't know how to deal with it. Um, it was called GigX, and what we did is we hosted really large video game files and demos, and we made those available for download uh, for uh, by customers all over the internet. And um, who who here's heard of Google? Right, probably a few people. Okay, so Google uh, has a business model called cost per click, which means every time uh, somebody clicks on a link an advertiser gets charged. And that's how Google is the most profitable, successful company pretty much anywhere. Well, five years before Google came out with cost per click, GigX had the same idea. And we were like, instead of charging game publishers, um, you know, a flat rate to host their stuff, we would just charge them every time somebody clicked on a game link. We charge them a dollar each time they download it. And you know what happened? 
in uh, 2000 when we went to all our customers and said, hey, this is what we want to do. Every single one said, that's a stupid idea. I will never do that. Why would we ever pay when someone clicks? So as we all know, um, it was the business model. It still is the business model of the century. But another thing about SaaS, which is super important, is timing is everything. And in, a, um, in any business, uh, anything in life, in fact, timing is really anything. But for SaaS, uh, it wasn't accepted at the time. It wasn't widely adopted at the time. Companies still want, had the idea that if something wasn't running on their servers in their back room, it wasn't real. Obviously, everything's changed. Everything's on the cloud. Now, that's the way um, stuff works. So let me talk to you a little bit about the business model of SaaS. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but I'm just going to just going to give an overview and so you understand some of the terminology and you know what it's what it's really all about. So why is SaaS um, super popular? Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to go up here. We're going to do this. Why is SaaS so popular? Well, the key benefits are number one, there's no hardware. Number two, there are flexible subscription levels. It's either on a monthly or on a pay-per-use basis. It integrates with a lot of third-party APIs and services. Salesforce has a big um, ecosystem where diff different companies create hooks into the Salesforce platform and uh, they sell their services and add-ons to Salesforce. Facebook has a lot of hooks into its platform and allows people to connect to it. So that whole idea of being open, you know, being as open as possible to let other companies connect to your service is very popular. What else is really great? Well, as we talked about with mobile games, you know, if you're on a mobile game, if you're on a mobile dating site, if you're on Uber, if you're on WeChat, all that is happening on your device, on your mobile, from anywhere, at any time, on any connection, and you don't have to upgrade the software. It's instant, it's pushed from the cloud, and there's no extra charge for it. And as you said, or as we said, you pay as you go, or in a lot of cases, it's free. But when it's free, it's not really free, as the whole conversation has been about Facebook, whereas you now, the user, become the product. Um, or in uh, games, obviously, the, the great model of free to play, where everyone can play for free, but you can buy items and you can buy status and you can get to be better in the game by buying more things. That's a hybrid model. So everyone sees advertising, there's advertising in there, but then people who want can go buy, um, go buy things in the game. So the bottom line is SaaS is popular because it's fast and easy to deploy. All right, now let's talk about the business of SaaS. Let's talk about the business model. What the reason why SaaS is so incredibly popular, specifically with entrepreneurs and investors, is because of the business model is MRR or ARR, monthly recurring revenue or annual recurring revenue. So instead of just selling something once, the old days of video games, like on a, on, a on a console, like a PlayStation or an Xbox, you'd buy a box, you'd pay $50, $60, and that was that. Whereas now, you know, you subscribe, you pay $2 a month and you get to play the game. So um, it's just a better way of doing things because the customer understands it. They understand they're paying X amount of money per user every month. And the goal of the SaaS company is to grow their install base. So, you know, your monthly recurring revenue is what your revenue is. That's your total revenue, uh, your total monthly fee based on all your revenue. And there are a bunch of other things, um, you know, that you're that you're looking at important metrics that if you're starting a SaaS company, investing in a SaaS company, you know, you wonder understand what's the average revenue per account? 
you know, or what's the ARPU, average revenue per user? Or in the gaming world, what's the ARPU DAO, the average revenue per daily active user? Um, so there are a bunch of different ways to calculate this, but your MRR equals your average revenue per account times your total number of customers, and that gives you your revenue. So what you want to balance in SaaS is you're always trying to add new MRR, new monthly recurring revenue. And you want to expand your MRR by upselling and offering new services and new add-ons. At the same time, inevitably, down here, you're going to see you're going to have churn. You're going to have people who use your service for a little while and leave or don't like it or for whatever reason want to go somewhere else. So the goal here are to have these lines going more quickly, rising more quickly than this line. So if your MRR is low, if, for example, if these were reversed and your churn was larger than your MRR, well, guess what? That's an indication you're not going to be in business very long. Um, the other reason SaaS companies are really great is it's a very transparent way to sell. It's a transparent way to hire salespeople. So your job, Mr. Salesperson or Mrs. Salesperson, is to here's your base salary, and then you can double it if you go sell more. And, um, you know, salespeople like it because it's an ongoing revenue stream. And if companies are smart, you know, if publishing companies, SaaS companies are smart, they'll let the salespeople earn as much money as possible. So some sales uh, commissions, uh, some sales companies only give a commission based on, you know, the, the amount of the sale, a one-time thing. But if you have it where it's over time and you allow the salesperson to build up, you know, a base of revenue, they can be making several times what their base salary uh, could be. So that's very motivating, and that allows the salespeople to be aligned with the goal of the company. So that's pretty much, you know, all I have. Um, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm not really sure, you know, I could go on really in depth for a long time, but I don't think that's really uh, the, the goal here right now. So um, here's my information. Here's my name, and here's my LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is obviously big in the U.S., so feel free to find me there. And uh, here's my email. And uh, on Twitter, you can find me there as well. So that concludes uh, my presentation. And thank you very much. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, that was pretty cool. And, you know, during the Q&A uh, session later, I think we'll have to ask you about New York as well, uh, since you probably know a lot about the scene in New York as well with uh, Silicon Alley and, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, we were we were one of the first companies in Silicon Alley, frankly. So awesome, yeah. really cool. Okay, well, I've, I've got questions I already have lined up for for that. Um, so thanks thanks again, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring on the next presenter. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so now we're bringing up Gary. Gary's coming up next to represent Denver. He is our last speaker of the morning. Well, it's morning here in Korea. All right, so Gary, I've given you presenter mode. I think you just need to accept it. Gary might be away from the computer. I don't know. Gary, if you can hear us, uh, can you send a message in the chat? Maybe, uh, maybe there's an issue with the computer. Okay. Well, oh, I think he had to. Looks like he had to restart his computer. Let's um let's 
bring, let's, we'll give a few seconds to him while he's uh, doing that. I'm going to bring Brett, Chris, and Gary on, sorry, Chris and Mark on the screen. And let's just uh, talk for a bit. We can, we can do our little short panel here because I'm not sure what happened with, if he has a computer issue or, or what. So if you guys want to, oh, Gary's on. I'm here. All right, Gary, great. Okay, I'm going to get rid of Chris and Mark. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry you, about that. No problem. We thought you might have had an issue. Uh, okay. I could, I could blame it on the snow, but it all melted yesterday, so. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's interesting. You actually have snow already. Uh, of course, you're in the mountains in Colorado. Um, yeah. Okay, well, welcome to Gary, and, you know, whenever you're ready, go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see how much Korean you know. I I know nothing. I know nothing. Can you guys see my slides? Uh, not yet. Oh, now we do. Okay. All right. Yeah. So my name is Gary Gessler. I've been in uh, the cloud SaaS space for the last probably ten years, and I've had a number of uh, startups that I've launched, and a couple that I've sold, and. Uh, let me just, I'm playing with the screen here. Um, a couple of them I sold, uh, StreamStep uh, was a DevOps uh, cloud solution that we sold to BMC Software. It's the 10th largest software company in the US. Um, I had a, uh, a VoIP uh, comparison shopping site that uh, I sold here. There we go, see if that helps, that I sold. Uh, about 10 years ago. And then uh, I uh, co-founded Cloud Elements. It's a 150 person API, uh, API platform to integrate uh, cloud uh, B2B applications. And uh, we just completed our Series C last year, uh, 55 million in funding. And uh, some of our investors and customers are SAP, ServiceNow, American Express. And then uh, most recently, I joined up with Nihilus. Nihilus is a uh, communications API for email scheduling and uh, contacts and uh, SaaS platforms like CRM platforms, HR platforms, FinTech, healthcare events type platforms integrate our APIs into their uh, into their workflows. So uh, been in the SaaS space for a long time. Um, Denver has really grown. Uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, it's uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, thousand miles, couple thousand miles west of California, San Francisco. And uh, Denver sits right in the base of the Rocky Mountains. So it's, uh, uh, really nice uh, mountains and as long and plains and uh, flatlands. So, but Denver and Boulder sit right along the, the we call them the Front Range, and uh, we've seen an explosion of SaaS startups. And primarily, uh, a big part of that is through TechStars. I haven't gone through TechStars, but my son went through TechStars, and uh, I'm a mentor at TechStars. But some of the companies that we've seen come out of Techstars are uh, Syngrid, which uh, became a unicorn. Uh, they IPO'd and became a unicorn, and then Twilio purchased Syngrid a couple years ago. Uh, Brandfolder was also a Techstars company, and they uh, were most recently bought for $155 million by uh, Smartsheets up in Seattle. So that's... Uh, that's a pretty cool story that we had just recently of an exit. Uh, Ibotta, which is a uh, retail uh, grocery store coupon shopping application, they just uh, received funding at a billion dollar plus valuation. So we've got a unicorn there. And then Home Advisor, um, what recently purchased Angie's List, which is a large SaaS application for matching uh, home home type construction projects to contractors. So 
these are just a few. We've got hundreds of different SaaS uh, startups, and Denver is very popular with uh, Bay Area companies moving here because it's less expensive. It's at least a half the cost to live and uh, about three quarters of the cost for uh, developers and to hire salespeople. So it's a good place to uh, grow a startup company or a SaaS company. And, uh, and we're seeing a lot of the large software companies in the Bay Area have uh, uh, offices here. Uh, matter of fact, Zoom, which my son works at, has uh, more people based in Denver than they do at their corporate office in uh, San Jose. So they have about 500 people in the Zoom office or used to be in the Zoom office. They've been closed for the past year, like all these other companies. But we have Google, uh, we have Facebook, we have Slack, um, we have Twitter. So all the major uh, Bay Area software companies uh, employ people here, which is uh, good and bad. It's good because they bring high paying jobs. It's bad because it's very competitive to hire good talent, good salespeople and uh, good developers um, because the uh, the big Bay Area companies are paying Bay Area salaries here. But uh, that's just a, a quick overview of Denver. It's, uh, it, it's growing very, very fast. Uh, uh, recent college graduates love to move here because of uh, all the jobs and uh, young people like Colorado because of the lifestyle with the skiing and the mountain biking and the fishing. It's a very healthy lifestyle, lots of outdoor activities, mountain biking and climbing and hiking and camping. And uh, it's a great place. Uh, it's an excellent place to launch a SaaS startup. There's uh, um, some great other ecosystems besides Techstars. There's the Founders Institute. University of Denver has a startup accelerator and there's a number of accelerators uh, in Fort Collins and uh, down in Colorado Springs. So with that, uh, I'll hand it back over to you guys. All right, thanks Gary. Um, you bet. Very cool, and I think you actually are not originally from Denver as well, right? You kind of moved around a bit? Yeah, I moved around a bit. I was actually born in New Mexico which uh, is a beautiful place. Uh, I'd suggest visiting. Uh, if, you've, uh, if you watch Breaking Bad, uh, Breaking Bad was uh, uh, filmed in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, beautiful state, great Mexican food. And Santa Fe, New Mexico is the famous place, uh, the famous Indian artists. And uh, it's just south of us. But uh, I've been in Colorado ever since. Great. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm from Texas, and uh, we used to go to New Mexico and Colorado just for skiing every every winter yeah. or spring. So those are probably yeah. the two things I'm most familiar with outside of Texas. Um, but yeah. being in Asia for over a decade now, so uh, oh, wow. um, it's uh, been a while since I've been back. <laughs> well, thanks, Jonathan. No problem. I'm going to bring the other guys on the screen now so we can all talk together for a few minutes. Um, give me one moment. Okay, bring on Chris and Mark. And okay, great. Chris is coming on, <clears throat> and Mark. So it's interesting. I I almost wore my my TechStars uh, hoodie today, and I didn't. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I went to the Berlin program a couple of years ago, and now I'm a mentor here in Korea. Cool. And um, yeah, um, I think everyone here is, is familiar. Now, actually, the first question I have kind of starts with area. You know, most people are familiar with, with San Francisco, uh, Silicon Valley startup scene. You know, that's, that's the most famous in the world, in the US. Um, after San Francisco, many people in Korea are asking for two, right? And that's really hard. Uh, hey, Jonathan, we're having a tough time hearing you. You're like, every other word's kind of dropping out. Oh, can you guys hear me? Is it, everyone having the same problem? Well, I think there's background noise is the issue. Okay, um, I'm gonna change my Wi-Fi. 
Um, there's no background noises where I am probably because I'm in it by myself. But um, yeah, I guess yeah, I think I think we're good now, to be honest. Good? Yeah, I can hear you quite well. Great. Just in case, though, I'm going to change over my Wi-Fi. So if it's if it, or is it is it good? Is it good, guys? You, you sound just fine enough for, for me. I don't know about the other gents. All right. So basically, um, yeah, I guess if, if you guys have background noises, you could just do this for a second until you speak. So um, a lot of a lot of people here are asking me, you know, what's the second most you know popular startup or SaaS scene after Silicon Valley? I mean, everyone knows Silicon Valley uh, around the world, and you know, I think the contenders are usually New York, Austin, and Denver, and then you got like uh, Vancouver and Toronto that I'm a little less aware about. As, as far as when it comes to that, so sorry about Chris, but um, <laughs> I want you guys to kind of tell me, you know, what do you think is number two after Silicon Valley? Would it be any of those cities I mentioned? Uh, I think anyone? there's a new number one. I think there's a new number one, okay. um, and that is your couch. <laughs> uh -huh. And what? I mean, you know, I'm from New York. And I remember growing up in New York and it was a real dump. There were like drug addicts and criminals and garbage. It was, it was a terrible place when I was a kid. And then, you know, in the mid nineties, uh, the guy who came in as the mayor cleaned it up, Giuliani cleaned it up. And ever since then, New York's been a great place, but you know, uh, at, since COVID New York has really devolved. San Francisco is a total, you know, what hole right now. I mean, my wife and I were out to lunch, you know, a month ago in the city. And it's super depressing. Half the places are closed. They're like homeless people wandering around everywhere. And, you know, the cost of living is famous in California, as Gary was talking about, and specifically in the Bay Area. I think this is the only time that I, you know, I haven't been here so long, but, you know, rents are down like 25%. You know, people are, people are selling their houses and getting the hell out of here. I mean, I'm literally buying a new house right now in Nevada, you know, over in, in Reno because, you know, we're sick of this. And so I think if if you come to San Francisco, or you come to Silicon Valley and you're making a lot of money. And then at the end of the month, you have nothing because you're just spending crazy amounts of money on all sorts of things. You know, people have wised up to that. So I have a lot of friends, you know, in my crypto group who are in their 20s. This one woman who's a co-organizer in our crypto group, and she said, I gave up my apartment in San Francisco. I'm just going to be, you know, she's a consultant. As long as she has her laptop and um, an internet, she can do her work. So I think that really is the model now, right? I mean, uh, we've all gotten used to being on Zoom or, you know, video all the time. And I think if you can collaborate and come up with, uh, you know, a way to hoist up a product and test it out and, you know, be disciplined. I don't think it really matters where where you are. Um, you know, that's kind of my opinion for, you know, the end of 2020. We'll see. That's a good point. Is it okay if I if I, is it okay if I jump on that one, Jonathan? Yeah, go please. Is it okay? So so I'm from Vancouver, okay, but and in, in Toronto, Vancouver, it's kind of like the Seoul Pusan sort of thing going for it. Um, but I gotta say the Toronto the Toronto startup scene is is. It, it really is going to be a reckoning. And if you aren't aware of it right now, there's one thing that's incredibly unique. Uh, and I don't know, uh, Gary, Mark, if, you're, if you've ever been aware of the CDL, uh, the Creative Destructive Lab, which came out of uh, the University of Toronto. It's a new way. So, I mean, they have tech stars. I mean, I, I did a, I, I, I tabled a conference for tech stars last week in Toronto. Um, they have all of those, but the CDL is incredibly interesting because it's it's a combination of the universities, uh, which is between UBC, my, my, my old school, um, Oxford, in Toronto, where they have actually the, all the MBA program works for uh, them, it's incredibly competitive, and it's it's a it's a very interesting model around what they're doing with AI and all these. And now that we've got a bunch of the big anchor companies uh, that are also a, a huge part of that, uh, such as Shopify, you know, they're out of Ottawa, but they, they're still a, a huge player no matter what. Um, the CDL, I think, is going to be very very groundbreaking. I, I think you're going to hear a lot about the model of which they're doing. Um, and I know that uh, the University of uh, Oh, what is it? Um, Pennsylvania just jumped on with them. Wisconsin just jumped on with them. Um, it's 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 going to be something very interesting, and I think Toronto is going to be a real push because of it. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, both of those make sense. You know, um, being the couch as you know the number one place to be. 
you don't have to be any specific location with uh, since we're all locked down in quarantine and like that. So that that's great. great. Um, yeah, and let, let me say, I I don't I don't think that's the ideal situation. I think that's just the reality right now. Yeah. And um, you know, like I said, I run this big meetup called Crypto Mondays, and we used to have amazing events at you know thirty second story you know, offices with wine and food and great speakers. And now we're doing it on Zoom. So, you know, everyone misses the human interaction. But at the same time, you know, uh, I, one of the people who was on on our event last night, he literally has been traveling the world nonstop. He runs a company called Celsius that does crypto lending. And, you know, one week the guy would be in Singapore, then he'd be in Berlin. And like now when we can't do that, we're being like, hey, we can be pretty efficient. You know, it's maybe not as much fun. You don't get all the cool parties, but you know, we can be efficient and do stuff. That, that we have the same situation here. You know, we would do these um, podium star. It's a pitch event that we started last year, and you know, it was super fun. We get wine, we have food. People come and pitch. We get local VCs to come join and kind of scatter the stars. But um, we do it online now, which obviously is not as fun. We're able to get a more global audience and we're able to get people from around the world to that. So it's better now you can start up seen by, you know, uh, investors in other continents. But it's just, you know, it's a little bit more boring. But, you know, what can you do, right? Um, so it sounds like every, every one of us here has some type of a podcast or meetup group or, you know, I know, Gary, you mentioned you're a, a community builder as well. Uh, so Chris... You have a podcast, Mark. You have your own. Is, a, is it a podcast as well, or is it a uh, offline or online meetup? It it was uh, an offline meetup, but now it's an online meetup. I'll, in okay. fact, I'll just okay. it's called Crypto Mondays. I'll just drop in the uh, here's the replay link from our event last night. So if anyone wants to to, to hear it, you, know, you can just check it out. Great, and I think Chris, you can uh, put your link to your podcast in there as well. And and Gary, could you mention a little bit about? Uh, I know you mentioned the community building, but do you have any uh, regular meetups online or offline? Could you guys hear me? Or is the connection going down? No, I can hear you. Do you hear me? So uh, yep. my question is for Gary. Um, are you working on any kind of regular you know, events or meetups with, uh, with SAS? Um, other than just our local uh, SaaS stock meetings, uh, no. What what I found is there are just so many virtual events right now. I think uh, you know, just uh, people are burned out. They're burned out. They're on, on Zoom all day long. Yeah. And uh, it, p people are just itching to get back out. Um, I've had a couple networking lunches and dinners and breakfasts recently. And things in Denver are much, much more relaxed than it. Yeah. Um, we lose Gary? He, might, I he, think might. He, was, he got frozen in all the snow over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, Jonathan, I'll, I'll just jump in there. Actually, I, I'm the, uh, the, the the founder of another group here uh, called Video, which is the Vancouver IOS Developers Industry Association. It's a meetup group. It's about 3,000 members uh, here. We do all things IOS. And I got to say, we don't do too many meetups right now because it's just not fun to do it remotely. Sorry, Gary, you, you froze there. So I just thought I'd just add some, uh, some, some color on the paint there. Yeah, yeah, totally ditto. <laughs> um. Yeah, so just for you guys, I mean, in, in Korea, just to give you a little bit of a sense of what things are, are going, you know, it's, uh, Corona is not, not too big of an issue. Uh, you know, the largest is we get 100 cases a day in the whole country, I think. And so and, and, Koreans, and Koreans are really, you know, already freaking out about that. You know, like, oh, you're not wearing a mask. But I mean, but, I mean compared to what's going on in North America, in Europe, uh, in other countries, you know, it's obviously a lot better. So yesterday we put on our own demo uh, day for a uh, government comp uh, corporate, um, and we, uh, you know, it was great. It was, it was a hybrid, of course. So offline, it's limited. The people who are running the event, the startups, the, the judges, a few people in the audience, but mostly we, you know, streamed it on YouTube. So um, you know, there, I think there is a way to kind of do both, where it's not just online, 
uh, because I didn't, you know, we hate seeing these boxes and just looking at Zoom all day, um, but seeing like a stage, even if you're watching it online, it still is a bit more interesting to watch, you know, a stage and, uh, you know, people coming out, and doing some visuals, high quality instead of, you know, some pixelated webcam, uh, you know, I think we are missing that kind of visual as, as a human, right? Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, do any of you guys have questions for each other? I mean, feel free to jump on it any time. You know, uh, the first one you guys have probably talked before. Well, Gary, I'm really interested in you know uh, what your LinkedIn said that you're building the next unicorn. Um, you know, and out here in Silicon Valley, everyone is so kind of focused on valuation and how much money you raise and that sort of thing. And um, there, there's, I've seen a lot of people, you know, who've done startups, a bunch of startups before, who are just, who want to find not necessarily a lifestyle company, but want to have a company that just kind of grows and makes money and they don't want to go the whole venture route. Just wondering, like, what's your perspective on that and how you look at, you know, um, at this phase, you know, what, what you're interested in and as you yeah, one of the reasons I joined Nihilus is that vision of becoming a unicorn and everything that we're doing, we're building the foundation and the launch pad to become a unicorn. Uh, the quality of people, uh, the quality of the product, the uh, quality of uh, our VCs, uh, the quality of uh, the, the customers that we're going after. And, you know, I've built a number of companies in the past and my previous company, Cloud Elements, which is doing very well today, over a $55 million valuation and uh, I'm sorry, 55 million um, in funding within five years, 150 people. Uh, we uh, just, we'd never had the vision of being a unicorn. And uh, I've worked for a number of Colorado companies and a number of San Francisco Bay Area based companies, and there's a huge difference in uh, the perceived value and the ability to get traction faster and have a higher valuation. And if you're a San Francisco based SaaS company, the world perceives you as, uh, you know, playing in the big leagues and uh, having that having that potential uh, to be a unicorn. It's very rare in Denver that we have companies become unicorns, which are major success stories for us where there are a dime a dozen in San Francisco. And just so everyone knows, unicorn refers to a company with a billion dollar or greater uh, valuation. Right, so, you know, um, even in Korea now, there's a term called baby unicorn or free unicorn, and uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with those phrases that are being used as much in the U.S., Canada, but they're saying that a lot here. Oh, it's a unicorn, baby unicorn, you know, uh, where it's not quite a billion dollars in value. But Chris, you had something to say? Well, we actually call it a narwhal. If you're a Canadian unicorn, we call it the narwhal. So it's kind of slightly the same thing, just a whale version of the of the horn. Nice. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Um, so real quick, I want to ask a few kind of like rapid fire type things for any uh, Korean startups are interested in going to, you know, uh, New York, San Francisco, Denver, Vancouver, et cetera. Um, what, what is a, a good enabler in the ecosystem that would really help them get started? Are there any, like, you know, uh, organizations, whether it's government or corporate or just organizations to, to look into? Well, you know, I'm I'm also a mentor for a group called U.S. Market Access, and I've been doing that for about seven years, where we partner with um, primarily government organizations. So a lot of countries, like we've done a lot of work with Korea, with Kotra, you know, where they gather together a bunch of companies they think will be successful. They bring them to Silicon Valley. They want to do the kind of you know, tech tourism, get the Silicon Valley fairy dust sprinkled on them, you know, and that sort of thing. So I think um, there's a belief in a lot of places. And, you know, I've worked with groups as far from, um, uh, you know, Malta to Ireland to um, we just had a group from Sardinia last summer, you know, 
little part of Italy. But I think the reason why people want to come here is that, you know, you can meet people like Gary or me or Chris who've been there, done that, not just once, not just twice, but multiple times. You know, if I have an issue that I need a lawyer to look at, you know, specifically around, you know, SAS licensing or, you know, a very specific issue, you know, I know 10 people who I could go to who've had that experience. You know, if uh, a lot of people, they grow a company, they make money, then they become angel investors, right? So I think that's kind of why the Bay Area has been so successful because this ecosystem's grown up over the last 40 years. And you have a bench of talent and of people that can help in a variety of different ways. And in that sense, it's kind of more efficient. There, it has been. And, you know, the ability to go sit down with these people and, ha- you know, and also the fact that it's more informal. It's not as uptight as New York or Chicago. You know, that, that's been good. But like I said earlier, I think with the whole COVID thing and the whole distributed thing, you know, people still want to work. People still want to work with people they like and people want to work with people they admire and they want to work with people they can make money with. And the number one rule with everyone I advise is I have a no assholes rule. You know, do not work with anyone who's an asshole. If she's the smartest person in the room or he was this guy at Stanford and Harvard, just don't do it. Uh, I think that's good rule. I think that's also one of Techstars' mantras, you know, don't, don't, be, don't be an asshole or don't work with assholes. Um, I think we probably maybe lost Gary, but I think he's probably in, in, a, in the middle of a blizzard or something over there in Denver. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, Chris, any thoughts about Vancouver? Yeah, well, one one thing that I like to say first off is we love, we, we, we honestly love uh, new Canadians and we love immigrants. Um, Vancouver's 50, maybe 60%, 55, 60% Asian. Uh, the majority, everyone thinks it's a French English thing. My kids actually speak Chinese at school. Um, that's more important. Um, and so immigration is a big thing. It's very easy to get here. We actually have an immigration policy called the Maple Visa, which is actually a startup visa, uh, which allows you to uh, bring your startup here and to found here. Um, and we have a lot of government programs that are going to help you do that. Um, you know, I love, I'm in San Francisco, well, with, I mean, obviously the border's closed, but I love getting into San Francisco. I love Denver. I have families in, bo- in both cities. I think they're great cities to do business in. Um, but, you know, there's something, there's a flavor of all of them here that you'll find um, and a very international flavor uh, to do business. So, you know, we, I can be in San Francisco or Denver in two, you know, three hours to Denver, two hours. Um and you can do a lot. I mean, the thing that's kind of interesting, a friend of mine uh, founded a, a company called Grammarly, which you might have heard of. And he actually got so irritated at the current administration that they are a San Francisco based company originally from Toronto. But they actually the executives live in Vancouver because they don't they, they want to have the lifestyle, um, whereas they can still jet down to San Francisco as needed. Um, but, uh, you know, lots of opportunity. But, uh, you know, I'm just really glad to be on the stage with, uh, with, with Gary and Mark to, you know, to hear about the great cities that they're dealing with, too. That's great. Um, and to comment on that, you know, people think of, you know, the U.S. as, you know, this immigrant country and everything like that. But compared to Canada, uh, way behind, uh, you know, there's lots of rhetoric, of course, nowadays with, with things political. But, but I think uh, Canada really, really embraces the immigration thing more than any other country I've known of. Um, you, know, mm-hmm. you guys might, Chris might be, be especially familiar with uh, a TV show on Netflix called Kim Si Pyeonijang, which is Kim's Convenience. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't know the Korean name for it. <laughs> oh, oh, because I live in Korea and everyone talks about it. Well, all my friends talk about it. Yeah. And so for you guys who don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a Netflix show about a, uh, a Korean family who's immigrated to Canada, first generation, and they have children. And it's all about their daily lives. And, you know, it's just, it, it's a really... Uh, laid back, very, you know, casual show, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, has lots of cool things. Um, but you know, it's, it's Vancouver, I believe. Sorry. It's no, it's Toronto. I've, I've actually been in Kim's convenience. Okay. I have some pictures. Okay. Um, it, it's in Toronto. It's in a very scary neighborhood in Toronto. Actually. Well, for, for you guys who are interested in Korean culture, you could probably watch it and pick up a few things, but you know, um, mm-hmm. so Chris, you've been to Korea, obviously, um, yep. uh, several times, uh, cause your family, you mm-hmm. know, your wife's from here. 
And then, Mark, I know you mentioned you've been here in 2004, and I'm sure you've been back, Mark. Since yeah, I was, I was, I was in Korea last year, actually, um, okay. twice. Okay. Great, yeah. Gary. Have you been to Korea before? Never been to Asia. Well, you you were missing out, buddy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if, if everyone has to say one thing about what makes Korea amazing, uh, the food probably. I mean, if it's mm -hmm. just if it's just a, your first time coming, you know, uh, I don't I don't know how about anyone who doesn't like Korean food unless. Mm. Oh, Chris, I'm a vegetarian. I can't eat any of it. Okay, I was gonna say maybe vegetarian. Delicious <laughs> <laughs> though. Let me be honest. You know, there's tongue or you know, there's a few different things, uh, some noodles, nengnyeon, and this kind of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I uh, for me, it's difficult because I don't eat pork, and so that, it's, it's difficult being anywhere in Asia for that. But you know, um, that, that's something you have to just deal with. Um, anyway, um, guys, I, uh, this was this was great. Um, I think that's probably all the time we have today. Um, we do have, you know, a decent sized people still left in the audience, and I wanted to try the networking function to see how well that works. So for you guys who want to stay on a little bit longer. I'm gonna. There's this feature on uh, on on Bevy, which is the platform we're on right now. Um, Gary might be familiar with it because he's also uh, doing the same thing I'm doing with, with SaaS stock. But for for Mark and Chris, we can make these little uh, breakout rooms, and you can have people mm -hmm. networking with the audience. Uh, so Love it. I don't know how shy or non-shy people will be, um, you know. But we can try it out. And actually, if you guys are in the audience right now, um, want to chat and uh, mention if you'd like to you know talk on screen uh privately or or with us um yes chelsea that is that is canadian i, I thought it i didn't know that in the beginning also but it is um do, do you know you know Uppa from that show he was in the latest mandalorian episode I heard as one of the as one of the tie fighters saw, so we thought that was hilarious yeah i saw that on my uh, google news feed and i was like wow that's pretty <laughs> interesting um all right well um you know we're gonna try this little breakout room gary have you tried the breakout room on on on, on, on bevy virtual you haven't i have not Okay. Just curious what, how what you guys think of Bevy. I mean, I've been doing like mm -hmm. Zoom and Zoom. Um, we just did a big Zoom meeting instead of a webinar. And I have a friend who's using this thing called Remo, R E M O. Not sure if you've tried that. But so let, let me answer first. I haven't heard of Remo, but what I we have used is right now we're using Bevy Virtual, which is interesting. We've got we can see our screens. We can see the you know people chatting. Um, we can you know share our screens. There's also a platform I use called AirMeet. AirMeet is an Indian platform. I think it's from Bangalore, I think. And they recently raised 12 million from uh, Sequoia, um, a local Sequoia branch, I believe. And we use that for a pitch event. And it, it's, it's interesting because you can, you can give emojis and clap. You, know, you can see these claps coming across the stage on the screen. It, it gives a little bit more engagement from the audience. Um, you can let anyone come on the screen. There's a backstage, so speakers can go backstage and talk privately, which I find very useful for planning and also if you have a, a pitch competition, you, the judges need to go back and you know, talk about the scoring. That's, um, that's uh, air meat you're talking about? Air meat. It is, it is a little complicate, complicated. It's a bit complex compared to other platforms, um, you know, but I, you know, I think they'll, they'll be improving that a lot since they just got the 12 million in September. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's the events I've been, uh, working on. Remo. Okay. Okay. So we're going to try, I'm going to go ahead and say, we're going to sign off, but we're going to try the rooms and see, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then, you know, we tried, but thanks again to Chris from Vancouver, Mark in San Francisco, Gary in Denver, even though he's frozen right now. Um, thank you all for, for coming and joining, um, you know, We'd love to have you join our next event next week. We'll be, uh, you know, talking about Asia and um, come and join and, you know, listen in. And we, we can always invite people to come on the stage and talk about their experiences. Uh, both of you have been to Korea, so that would be very interesting. So uh, that would be great. So um, thanks again, guys. I'm going to go ahead and try this, this breakout room. And if it doesn't work after a minute, then, you know, that's probably it. Um, <laughs>
Sorry? Oh, come join me. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys. Kapshida. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Let's see what happens. Well, I click the button, but I'm not really sure what happens now. Um, ah. There you go. Oh, are we already in the room? Says you're about to join a room in 10 seconds. All right. <laughs> well, I got, I got, I got ten seconds in there. Then it moved me back out. So. Yeah. What happened was I. I think I did that because. Um, what happened was. I, I, I put it so there's two per room, but two people per room is not big enough. So, uh, yeah, I think everyone already left. So, um, yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again. Thanks so much. Thank really. you. Nice to meet Appreciate you guys. Nice to yeah. meet you, Mark. Nice Great. Meet Chris. Well, thank <laughs> good you. Good, night, good, good night. Good night. Well, thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Oh.